that. This is the today's uh, plan of my talk. I posted three papers this year. Oh, sorry. Oh, oops. Oops. Just, okay. Oh, okay. So I talked about uh, three, um, three papers, Sigma X1, Zot, Zaku. And then I launched a new TGS experiment. TGS is a superconducting calorimeter with uh, NIS and solder. I don't know about that. Uh, oh, anyway, I talked about, uh, yeah, first, I'm going to talk about uh, ion, ionized ion line and the discovery from Sigurds 1. This is the result of uh, Sigurds 1 is the spec of two uh, soft state spectrum of Sigurds 1, the Sigurds 1. And then you can see here in, in the black spectrum, you can, this is the magnified one, you can see a uh, helium like absorption line from ion. So that, so there, that we fortunately we've discovered or found the very deep absorption like for the first time from CBX1 in soft state. And then it, we also uh, can constrain the time evolution of this deep uh, high, uh, high ionized uh, absorption line like this. This is the time versus different ways of uh, absorption line. So there are only the one, this is, the, this is only, only for 10 to seconds that uh, absorption line becomes deep and then uh, return to the normal. Uh, this is the spectrum at this uh, deepest stages. So there, uh, you can see a really the absorption line, but it's, it's slightly wider, so it may be a contamination from other ionization stages. But anyway, we found a very deep absorption line from the from CS1. And uh, this is the uh, uh, example of the, I mean, I, this is the opposite, I don't know why. <laughs> this is the uh, asteroid stimulation of the absorption line. This is, I don't know, upside down and opposite. Anyway, so that we need, uh, I, I want to remind you that if we have, so we need both a high resolution and large effective area to track the resolution of absorption line. Uh, so I'm going to go to the second talk is our, uh, the evidence of the purest and homogeneous coloner. So, um, so this is the right curve of RHT, this is the hardest. So with Zuck, we observed she was one 25 times. Uh, and then, yeah. so each observation is, I think, uh, 20, 22 second time, 25 observation. So this is the uh, luminosity versus uh, intensity diagram. So the, I, I plotted with 25 points. So there, the, we, we are hopefully found our uh, track, the intermediate state and the low hull state and dim low hull state, and we can and I can, we can study the uh, wide band evolution of wide band spectra during the, this transition. Uh, this is all the 25 spectrum, then this is the immediate state, the bright state. So there, I, I sorted the spectrum from the from dim to our uh, bright state like this. So, and as you can see, the spectrum is gradually uh, increasing in the soft X-ray as, as shown by Chris today in the morning. And then and this is the magnified one, one the, the brightest phase. The, the, the gray, gray one is the, the, the dimmest phase. So as you can see there are a huge discrepancy or, or changes can be seen in the soft X-ray. Um, this is the ratio to the, the dimmest one. So the, 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 the observation three is one or one in, the, in, the, in all energies. So the spectrum becomes gradually softer as it gets brighter. And then the excess is is, is in, 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 in the middle of 10 kV is, is, is much more clearly you can see. So the, um, so the soft X-ray in the middle of 10 kV increases uh, more prominently than the hard X-ray in on the time scale of longer than weeks or months. So the, then we tested the, uh, the fast, not too fast, but uh, on time scale, one second variability on this time scale. So there, this method is the first we determine the high flux and low flux phase. Like this is the uh, the light curves I designed. So the, we first determine high flux phase and low flux phase, like and comparing this to our average country, and then extracting high low spectrum like this, and then compare the difference between them. Um, so this is the uh, spe spectrum ratio between high and low spectrum. So there. Um, so there, 
you can see the clear changes for the opposite the, the, uh, changes found in, in the lowest energy value, one or two kV. So that this means the spectral ratio, which means the, the variability drops below one or two kV. Then we apply the, so that we, we assume that the spectrum consists of the constant, which is a time invariable component plus a variable component. Then we can extract the constant component. The constant, com the shape of constant component is as uh, shown here. So that the blue one looks like a disk. And then actually, uh, the, the, this, the, this, uh, this blue component can be fitted very well with a disk mission. So we identify the constant component as this, and then we can tell the linear radius, and then we can tell also the linear radius versus Minoski. So that the linear radius is gradually uh, decreasing, crossing to the black holes as the Minoski gets brighter. So that this is the consistent of our view, our you know, the truncated disk in terms of you know, truncated disk uh, model. So and another. Another interesting thing you can see is in a, in a dimmest phase, this is a dim low hull state, uh, say luminosity uh, is less than 1% of radiant or much below, then the, the trend is opposite to uh, the bright state. So that one to, one to uh, less than below 2 kV variability increases oppositely to the bright phases. That is very uh, annoying because also we said the uh, the wide one spectra or uh, reason without uh, removing absorption. So the so this the black one is the, the bright state bright state in the low hot state. So there uh, you could expect the disk around here and then we could also succeed in getting the stable disk component. But in the blue spectra, this is the I couldn't see this blue one. Also, this blue spectrum is uh, here, so you can see uh, uh, not constant component but variable component. Then, even even in this stage, we can see uh, the uh, disk light enhancement. So there, the, the, this observation shows that this there is some variable component in this energy ranges. So that we uh, interpret this some, to some extent their uh, contamination from their variable seed photon. And then earlier we uh, think that this, there might be a somewhere in the between and uh, here synchrotron photons from when the luminosity gets lower than one percent of the red um, no, no. So another thing called it is a crazy spectrum only talk. So that uh, this is the soft orientation. So there, but here is the the volume spectrum, and this is a constant disk component as we identify the disk. And this the red one is a computerized component, and the red one is also computerized. That's either uh, the by fitting range is different. So that it means that there. To some extent, we couldn't see or some something intermediate is necessary. But now, you know, the, as always, we fit it with the Compton plus this. But this Compton cannot be explained by the, this to some extent. So we need something intermediate between some somewhere around here. And this also seen in, in any observation, even in the DM. So that we cannot fit all entire spectra with simply a this plus. Of internalization, but also we need something intermediate, and also this is also uh, has has a uh, de dependency on the minosity. So uh, we interpret this is not is though it's not unique, but uh, we interpret this uh, intermediate component as a soft computerization as we are modeled with uh, two PS plus this commission like this. So that at present, uh, as we Given that our our exact spectra, we can interpret uh, entire data with can be explained with the miscellaneous coroner, and then this, uh, this, we don't want to say this is two or two or much long computerization would be uh, too likely. And then 
because uh, this is the summary of this uh, uh, the study of low heart state. The disk is getting closer to closer when it gets brighter, and then we clear see the much more disk. And the, but in a, in a dim in the luminosity lower, then disk getting getting uh, farther from the black holes, and then we could see more variable see the photon that I'm here. So there, so there, as, as far as we did. So the homogeneous coronal picture will be a, a, a most uh, yeah, well explained observational result. So there, in the near future, this is the civic uh, suspect and the overlaid with the aging N, but scale with mass and distance. So this is all these are that spectrum. In the you now with the astro age provide us the uh, one uh, at least one order of magnitude better quality spectra uh, about ten kb. So uh, this is the simulation of uh, MCD6. So you can clearly see the kernel off and then also reflection as well. So there we could much more detailed comparison for uh, AGM spec in this astro age. So there is this, uh, the third one is rapid variability. As you know, the six one shows the very rapid variability as was known in the ancient ages, uh, Furu and Ginger. Um, this is uh, this is their oh sorry, it's moving it's moving. This is an example of 3D image simulation that the matter is falling on the black holes. So uh, to study this uh, rapid variability, we uh, adopted the stacking analysis, not the frequency analysis, because the stacking analysis has uh, what is stacking analysis? So the stacking analysis is to determine the P and right curves and then the stack the data after the coding of time relative to the, the each peaks. So the, the stacks are in every peak. And then we need a function that a universal physics controlling and uh, some time variability is needed. And the, the, there are pros and cons and so the, the good point is to extract the physical quantity by fitting time slightly spec. So we can intuitively know what's happening on this on this time scale. And also soft X-ray can compensate for the lack of color X-ray. That's also another important core to utilize the ZAC data. But uh, the, the merit is uh, the finishing and the corresponding frequency is not unique. But we can, yeah, for the, as, um, given the ZAC data, we, so the, the stack analysis is much more suitable for the, in, in our uh, data analysis. This is the right cloud or one of the only three seconds light cloud of CBS1. So, uh, there, so we, 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 we define the flares like this, and then we determine, um, uh, we put some uh, uh, the, uh, the phases. So that we define this is the phase zero and the phase zero, and, and then the others we, uh, uh, we assign uh, another phase like this. So the, we, we accumulate one 4,000 layer in total and accumulate them. Then we can see, uh, we can get such a, a, a flare profiles. So this, this is interpreted from the uh, mammoth and uh, theoretical calculations. So the, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the dim phases, the hot gas is about a bit farther away from black holes and the gas is gradually fall, uh, falling into black holes and then this is the peak, at the peak, the maximum energy released at black holes, and then the gas is reflected as very sonic wave and escape from black holes. Um, so for the each phase, we can determine the electron temperature. So that is the merit of the timing of stack analysis. And then, as you, and then we can get a, a physical property like electron temperature, optical depth, or um, in particular, we can get competing. This is the time versus uh, physical quantity, the temperature. So that is uh, the, one of the uh, first discoveries we found that's very in, um, huge changes found in the one about 100 kb. This is suggests that the temperature changes, not only the optical depth. So that so that so that so that if, if it. So at least we could say their uh, energy about 100 kb changes faster than one energy one, less below 100 kb. Uh, we interpret this as our, the change in energy temperature. So much more statistics, much more sensitivity we could tell, much more uh, temporal variation of the quantum 
parameters. So, um, so this is the final uh, talk of the uh, launch with new TS experiment with NIST. So my latest work for a new mission optimized for iron K band. So there, so we need high count rate and high energy resolution same carrier three. So satisfies both uh, requirement we need super TDS superconducting limiters because the uh, superconducting limiter on both asteroids cannot be a large flex side and also there it's hard to get a uh, large uh, uh, many pixels uh, vintage wire on many uh, hardware issues. But we couldn't get it is hard to get a uh, Athena class mission. Um, so we need small mission. So that we, we hope to get small mission to realize this thing. So the much real meter optimized for iron K-band is a good option for us. So now there the currently we uh, urge it, uh, to utilize the TS on the current meter. So that so we launch new uh, mission with near in the US and then there we I start collaboration with uh, the uh, the crew and then the expert on the careers. And then so that this this mission is for um, to get the um, X ray from chaotic atom from T S later. So this is the preliminary uh, experiment result with NIST. Uh, this is the energy versus counter ray and then we shine many metals like uh, mangan, and sumerian, clonian, and holonian, and cobalt. So, and then we can get the, uh, uh, I think this energy resolution about 3 EV or, or about 2 or 3 EV. And then you can see K alpha 1 or K alpha 2 from each line. And then the, the uh, chaotic helium or chaotic helium, uh, X-ray from chaotic helium will come from here. So this is the, uh, this measure, this uh, experiment is aimed for cal energy calibration for the for to get the precise precise energy from these lines. So, in, so this is read by 100, 160 pixels, and we can uh, process uh, about 3,000 hertz uh, sim simultaneously, and then we can get energy resolution about 3 AV. This is the very first step for new mission we are expecting. So there, this mission will be realized. I think we, this is our future plan of J-Park. J-Park is our Japan proton accelerator research complex something. So the proton beams come here at the Hadron Center. Then this is the beam line, and then the K-ion comes, comes in here, and then the this the, here the target target is a helium liquid helium or carbon or something. And they get they get atoms. Atom is a carbon plus K ion. Then get then we we observe the X-ray from this uh, this K ion. So what we can tell is this is the schematics of the K ion plus nucleus nucleus is carbon or something. So we can tell uh, from measuring by measuring the X-ray from K ion atoms. We can tell the strong interaction. We can so the, the by uh, comparing with the, the energy predicted by uh, electromagnetics from the, uh, uh, the energy by predicted by strong forces. And also, the, uh, if we measure, uh, we maybe measure the X-ray from the, the transition from outer shape, we can precisely tell the kill mass. So here, uh, this is the aim of the mission. So uh, I will summarize my talk. So the ZAC detected uh, helium-like ion K absorption line from surface one, but uh, this lasted only 10 to seconds. So we need exposure and also the high effective areas. And the entire spectrum in low state can be produced by the disk and hard transition and soft compression in terms of the uh, disk configuration. And also we uh, possibly uh, expect the variable seed photon can be the count uh, probably the uh, uh, likely in the luminosity is quite low. And the photons in 
between the energy is rather than one hundred kV changes faster than uh, lower energies. Our, from one, our point of view, this is a change, faster changes in electron temperature at high, at very fast time scale. And we also launched new experiment with uh, TS calorimeter with that. We hope to see uh, high timing and high spectral resolution, a small time mission. Thank you.